I only have one message to give you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you call me. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. This is Evangelist Anita Fuentes coming to you today with Open Your Eyes People, breaking news. God bless you all my friends. Praise be to God. It's Tuesday, November 5th, 2013. You know, we're already in the month of November. Thanksgiving is just right around the corner, especially as quickly as time is going. Hey, you know it's one of the signs of the times, right? Jesus said that he will shorten the days for the elect's sake. Is that happening? Certainly seems like it is. Hey, listen, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for joining me on today's broadcast. Because you know we got some breaking news headlines for you, right? Matching Bible prophecy, what's going on with all the shootings lately? Some crazy stuff. For, well, you guys know what happened in LAX just a couple of days ago. The Los Angeles International Airport reported a gunman was on the loose. Different reports of a couple of gunmen on the loose. One wearing fatigues, one wearing all black, one having a shotgun, another one having a handgun, another one having multiple weapons. After so much confusion and chaos and what seemingly was a, a panic... They were able to finally get the shooter, not shooters, but the shooter under arrest after they shot him. Reports came out stating that he was dead. Other reports stated that he was uh, clearly arrested and they showed someone from a helicopter camera in handcuffs being led away. And then it came out that he actually was shot and was wheeled out on a stretcher. I mean, what's going on? Why the conflicting information, people? <laughs> what's going on? We have other reports that came out concerning this lone gunman that hit up the LAX, killed a TSA agent, and wounded several others, that he apparently carried a note on him. A note. Oh, no. Check this headline out. According to NBC... They reported that a note found with the gunman refers to Patriot upset with TSA. Statements in the letter indicated that the gunman viewed himself as a quote-unquote Patriot upset with the TSA and ex-Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano. We have another headline from IntelliHub that stated LAX shooter branded himself as a pissed-off Patriot by mainline press. From conspiracies of a new world order to outright hatred for former DHS head Jen, Jenna Napolitano, the Alex shooter was quite a patriot, says Mainline Press. The Daily Mail even reported that Ciancias, which is the fellow's last name, appeared uh, his views actually appeared to be in line with the anti-government patriot movement, whose members subscribe to the theory that a powerful secret alliance of international elites is plotting to form a one-world government, also known as a new world order. What? Wait, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me make something clear here. There's no secret. It's not, it's not a secret. You know, what, what people state as a conspiracy theory is actually Bible prophecy. You better hear me. You better hear me because we get, a lot of, we get a lot of new viewers and many may say, oh, no, New World Order. It's just a conspiracy theory. No, no, no. The Lord is clear on this. The New World Order is clearly stated in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 23 to 26. Uh, also, Daniel, chapter 8, verse 23 to 26. You got to take a look at the book of Revelation as well. Chapters 13 and 17 clearly out, out, outlining a New World Order. Now, the world, uh, who, uh, the, the ones that are blind, the ones who are spiritually blind, don't understand that it is Bible prophecy. They just see man in all this. And what they don't recognize is that it is specific prophecy by God himself 
brought forth by the prophets, uh, uh, the, the prophets of old, but we're living in the times right now. The new world order is real, but it's not just man. It's not man only. Man isn't just concocting this thing up. It is a satanic agenda that will unfold. Let me take that back. It is unfolding right now. It is unfolding on an unprecedented level like never before. Also, let me make something clear here. Daily Mail got it all wrong. They're, they, they're, they're quoted as stating that the, uh, uh, you know, that the Sancia, Sancia guy, the LAX shooter, his views appear to be in line with the anti-government patriot movement, um, whose members subscribe to the theory that a powerful secret alliance of international elites is plotting to overtake the world and, and do a new world order. It's not a secret, my friends. You, have you not known, have you not seen this? We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. It's about the future of Europe and a, a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it was a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And the hope that each of us has to build a new world order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the order. The beginning of a new international order. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity that isn't that a crisis. That this crisis in the way that has developed will require some kind of a world government. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think a new world order is emerging, and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. We have resolved that from today we will together manage the process of globalization to secure responsibility from all and fairness to all. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities. And there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. Well, during the, during the conflict with Saddam Hussein, which he handled so superbly in, in a short-term sense, but he kept talking about a new world order. Uh, 
and, and, and then President Bush, at the end of, the, of that war, promised he would give four graduation addresses, four commencement addresses, describing that new world order and what America's role was going to be in it. Turned out he gave one of those addresses and canceled the other three and talked about something else. That's what, because they weren't ready yet. That in fact, we're all going to have to give up a little bit of our sovereignty in order to make the world work. And I surely believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. And this present window of opportunity during which a truly peaceful and interdependent world order might be built will not be here for open for too long. Already there are powerful forces at work that threaten to destroy all of our hopes and efforts to erect an enduring structure of global cooperation. Are you optimistic a global system can happen? Yeah. From what we We're talking about presidents. Not all, not just leaders internationally, but presidents of the US that have clearly, outwardly, boldly, publicly, not secretly, publicly stated their agreement. They're looking forward their desire to, a, uh, to establish a new world order. A new world order. This is no secret, there's no conspiracy theory here. It's real, it's happening. We got more headlines, my friends, my oh my, my oh my. All right, let's move forward with some other breaking news concerning more shootings. Check this out. There was a shooting last night at a New Jersey popular mall where the gunman, or the shooting suspect, was found dead. It turned out that a well-known mall, a very famous mall, packed full of people just around closing time, a gunman comes in, again conflicting reports from eyewitnesses. They're eyewitnesses, they saw, they saw what happened, okay? I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Some said he was all in black, Others said he was in fatigues. Thank the Lord nobody, as far as, well, I was going to say thank the Lord nobody got shot and killed, but apparently the gunman was found with a self-inflicted gun wound, but he didn't kill anybody. Eyewitnesses stated he just walked around the mall shooting at the security cameras. And there was a note that he left. A note that he left. Now, no, it's not yet clear what the contents of the note was. I wouldn't be surprised. And maybe he he, he was uh, uh, what what maybe the mainstream media would pose as a conspiracy theorist towards the NSA. You know, the government actually spying on Americans, and he was just a pissed off patriot about the NSA. So he decided to go into a mall and shoot up the cameras. Oh, come on, people. You know, a lot of people are dubbing these shootings as false flags. In other words, a setup, a hoax. Now, we got to recognize something here because there's a lot of opinions on that. And we're not trying to get, we're, I'm not going to go into delving into all that right now. But I am going to say this. With the way our government is here in the U.S., okay? A lot of scandals, a lot of agendas being not just proposed, but pushed, forced, established by the government, the Obama administration, along with the, the scandals of Benghazi, of the IRS, of the uh, NSA, uh, this healthcare Obama fiasco socialist medicine that will be happening here, and it is happening here, and will actually make the collapse of America become a reality, like you are seeing it now. With all of this, you can't put it past them. I mean, they, if, they, if, they're, if they were willing to let four Americans die in Benghazi, if they were willing to let a guy who did some kind of YouTube video about the Mohammed, the Prophet Mohammed of Islam, and him, kept the, him get the fall for it, so much so that people were threatening to, to, you know, over there in the Middle East, to come over here and bombard the U.S. all because of what the so-called YouTube guy's video, what he did in that video that constituted basically a war. 
If they're willing to do all of this, if they're willing to target the conservatives, the Tea Party, the Christians, the evangelical Christians uh, through the IRS, for those who are against Obama, if they're willing to teach our military men and women, U.S. soldiers, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, the Social Security Administration, that the new face of terrorism is no longer Al-Qaeda or jihadists, but they're born again evangelical Christians who believe in the Bible and the book of Revelation, come on. And that's not, none of this is, none of this is an exaggeration, my friends. They believe that the new face of terrorism are those who decide to stockpile some food, some weapons, some ammo, if they truly believe all this, then you can't put a past this administration that are in cahoots, not only with uh, 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 drug lords and the cartels, but also in bed with the elites, with the international elites, with bankers, to establish a new world order. You can't not put it past that a false flag is definitely feasible, that it could happen, and that people actually died to make the whole thing look real. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we can't put it past these people anymore because it's evil operating behind them. Why? 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 Not just because they're bad people and so we just got to impeach Obama and that I'm going to tell you something here. Impeaching Obama sounds like a really great idea and it's something that we should be doing or I guess that's in, in the works, I guess, but it ain't going to happen. Why? Okay, let me show you. It's 1159 on the time clock of God. It's 11.59 on the prophetic time clock of God. The day of the Lord is at hand. And we got to recognize this because if we don't recognize this, we're going to be fighting a spiritual war with flesh. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right? Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Praise God, we do got a lot of patriots here in the U.S. We, we got a lot of people who love our country. I love this country. Praise God, I love this country. I'm not for a lot of things that a lot of people think that I should be for because I'm so-called a minority. I'm Hispanic, I'm Puerto Rican, and I'm a woman. I'm not for a lot of those things. I'm for, the, for God Almighty. I'm for what this country was founded on. That's biblical values, the standards of God Almighty that was brought forth. But we got to remember something. This country was also established for the working of establishing a new world order. First, the country was established so that we could bring the gospel out into all the world. And that's what we did. The U.S. has sent out more missionaries, more believers into other nations to spread this gospel like never before. You have Christian Network that was established here. Missionaries that were sent out. Bibles. I mean, just so many things. And because of this, a great prophecy has been, has, is, and continues, but has been fulfilled. And that's good. We were able to send it out, propel it fast through, uh, through TV networks, radio stations, and so forth. Why? Because the day of the Lord is coming fast. He's coming fast. Jesus is coming fast. He's coming fast. And that's what we don't recognize. Things, time is speeding up. Things are happening so quickly. I'm even talking quickly because the, the day of the Lord is at hand. I, I tend to talk quick. But the point is, is that things are happening quickly because the day of the Lord is at hand. And again, I say, the whole reason why I just said all that is because we can't put it past this administration. The law enforcement is being turned into a military. There are police men and women that are no longer in their uniforms. They're, they're wearing fatigues when they go out on these missions. We, we have military men and women coming out in areas that they really don't need to be coming out on, that they really don't need to be coming out in. It should just be local enforcement, but we have these military trainings now happening even in suburban, suburban areas. Listen, there's so much to cover. I've done more detailed coverage on what I'm speaking about and everything that I just talked about as far as all this stuff that's happening. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's happening, and I've given you broadcasts. A lot, we, again, we, we get a lot of new viewers. I urge you in the name of Jesus to take the time to go through our YouTube channel, get a cup of coffee, some tea, something to eat. Bring, have your Bible, bring your friends, your family, get somebody off the street that you know needs to be saved and you just don't know them very well. Get them in front of where you watch us at, your iPhone, your iPad, your computer screen, your, your TV. Some people have them hooked up to TVs and get into these broadcasts. I do all the work for you by the grace of God. Come on, because it ain't on me. Lord knows. 
but it's all by the grace of God and you will be surprised to know where we're at. And you know what? It goes further. It goes so much deeper than what I even get to produce. I bet I do my best because there's, there's only so much time we get, right? Here on this broadcast. All right, we got, we got to move forward with some more headlines because we had another apparent gunman on the loose in Connecticut approximately 24 hours ago. The College of Connecticut was on a lockdown. Connecticut, it says here, Connecticut University lockdown prompted by a Halloween costume. What? New Britain, Connecticut, it was reported that a person was carrying a sword and a handgun, and he was, and it actually led to a three hour lockdown at Central Connecticut State University. Well, it just so happened, it was all over the news yesterday morning, around. 9 uh, a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Many of you know it. We, we posted it on our Facebook page. And um, it was reported that there was a gunman on the loose. He had a sword, you know? He had a gun. He was all in black. I mean, people were, I mean, we were, were like tripping, right? SWAT teams come out. Mili uh, not the military. The police force and SWAT teams come out. And everybody's all like, what's going on? What's going on? Lockdown three hours. And it turns out, we had another headline, that it turns out that the student who prompted the Connecticut University lockdown apologizes, says that it was an incident, says the incident was a misunderstanding. What? <laughs> Excuse me? All right, let, I'm, I'll, I'll, you know we got info for you, right? <laughs> I gotta laugh, this is so stupid. And I think it's because they think we're stupid. Because this is what the story was. After this lockdown, it turned out that this student, this grown man, 20-something years old, 21, I believe, or so, he, uh, yeah, 21-year-old senior in this college, has a father that works as a college professor at the same college. Well, this man decided to go to a Halloween party on October 31st and spent three days away from the college campus, and all he had on was his... You got it. Halloween costume. He happened to dress as a ninja at this Halloween party, this gala that he went to, this little college craze party. He was out for three days, three nights, finally came back to his dorm, and because he didn't have a change of clothes, he came in on campus, you got it, with his Halloween costume, a ninja, with a fake handgun and a fake sword. And that's what prompted someone to call 911 because they thought it, it was a real guy. They thought it was a real gunman. What's going on? Again, many theories. Could it be a false flag? Could it be that they were going to use that, but then they held back because this later on that night, they had a shooting over in New Jersey. And that Ciencia guy who shot up LAX was from New Jersey and so now there's some focus on New Jersey I'm, hey we could probably get dizzy going in circles here come on but I don't want to get dizzy I know you don't either and we got some more headlines to go into come on we have some more shooting headlines that came out just early this morning where two teenagers are held after breaking into a Denver middle school where they had guns it's uh, reported that two teenagers were arrested for ransacking, well actually they broke into the middle school, ransacked the whole middle school, and were found with some type of assault rifle type of weapon, but the cops say that they don't think it's real, they believe it was a BB assault rifle looking type of weapon. Alright. Many of you know there is an aggressive agenda, one of many, to redefine our U.S. Constitution, one of which is the Second Amendment. There has been an aggressive agenda from Obama and his cronies and his, his administration, the, the, the leftists, the, the ones who are just for socialism and Marxism, wanting to be 
ah, firmly, firmly rooted and established and overtaking the U.S. Constitution for it to be the new Constitution here on U.S. soil. Yes, that's true. That's right. And uh, they've been pushing it. They've, they've done executive orders on certain guns. I, I live here in California. My husband and I own several weapons. Uh, uh, Governor Jerry Brown is in a number here. I mean, it's just, it's a hot mess. It's a form of gun control. In order to even have a CCW license here in the state of California, you virtually have to be rejected right off the bat. You, uh, in some areas here in the state of California, you will be rejected outright because you have to go through your local police department. They'll reject you no matter what, no matter what reason you put down, because you got to put, I guess, a reason, not I guess, I know for a fact, you have to put down a reason as to why you believe you need a CCW license and the right to bear arms isn't really an acceptable reason. Yeah, it is. I'm t there, it's not for, and listen, gun control isn't coming. It's here already. Gun control is here and it's in our face. It is so sick. It is really bad. And they're just wanting it to make it national. They want people on their side. So again, I say, are all these shootings on TV, I say on TV, it's happening uh, in all reality, but is all these shootings and all these massive crazy stuff just all over schools, malls, airports, are they happening to, uh, again, if it's a false flag, then we would know why, is being used to, 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 to get gun control, to abolish the Second Amendment. And, and, and many of us know what's happened. We know what's happened with other nations that's abolished gun control. We know what's happened to many other people when their guns were seized from them and there was no, uh, virtually no fight. We know the millions of people that were slaughtered, the purging that took place, the ethnic cleansing that took place. Is this what we're seeing here in America? Is this what's coming? We got to move forward with some more headlines. I just hope. We, we, we got to be ready. That's how we got to be. We got to be ready. Our names got to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, my friends. Because stuff is hitting the fan. Stuff is hitting the fan! And people feel it on their face and you're like, I feel it and I smell the stuff that's hitting the fan, but I don't care. Because our government would never do anything to us like that. Yes, Benghazi. Yes, IRS. Yes, NSA. Yes, it's Obamacare socialism. Yes, yes, Obama's admitted just yesterday that he's actually very good at killing people because he's used drones. Yes, 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 I know, I know. But he, they're not bad. They would never do anything to us. And the stuff is hitting the fan. And they're smelling it and it's getting slapped on their face. And when I say stuff, you know what I mean. They're smelling it all around them and they're like, no, it's not, I don't, I don't see anything. I don't, I don't notice anything. My goodness, people. We gotta open our eyes, amen? We got more headlines, you guys. We just got more, <laughs> we got more headlines. All right. Daniel chapter seven, verse 25. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half a time. Take the mark of the beast or be beheaded. Are you ready to make this choice? Why does this sound like some freaky science fiction book? Tell us what this is about. These two workers have microchips? Right, right. Well, this is very, very real. And these microchips are about the size of a grain of rice. They get injected into your skin. Characteristic film. Humans injected with a tiny chip holding the key to all of their private information. But as you're about to see in our CBS 46 investigation, it's not fiction. In fact, it's being marketed in Georgia as life-saving technology. Life-saving technology. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. In this explosive brand new CD, the question is answered. Are you ready to take the mark of the beast or be beheaded? In this timely message, Evangelist Anita answers the following questions with solid, biblically-based answers. Pre-, mid-, or post-tribulation rapture. The truth about the fear of death. The persecuted church versus the American church. Is the church the bride of Christ? The last generation anointing and much, much more. After hearing this message, you will be strengthened in your walk, bold in your stance, and ready to make any decision that may come your way in Christ Jesus. 
Log on today to www.emof.org. That is www.emof.org. Get you and a friend a copy today. Florida family who we are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. It is an imp the first implantable microchip for humans and has multiple security, financial, and healthcare applications. One thing I would just suggest, I'm just an outside school to be investor. I love this idea, by the way, Scott. I think it's the Northside Independent School District in San Antonio has put tracking chips in the ID badges for more than 4,000 high school students. All right. We have the U.S. signals it won't be backing Israel, also known as Israel. In other words, we have again the U.S. the Obama administration telling Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, you're acting overzealous again. You're getting all paranoid. Yes, they've threatened to bomb you guys. Yes, they've threatened to wipe you guys off the map. Yes, they've threatened another Holocaust. But you need to calm down. Let's first talk to them. Yes, you see them enriching their nuclear capabilities. I know. But why you gotta be all like that? Why don't you just sit back, relax, take a chill pill? This is the Obama administration telling this to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel. And they have to protect their people. Now, U.S. said that they have an eternal alliance with Israel. Just this, earlier this year when Obama went to Israel and, uh, made this covenant and you know we did a headline you know we did a broadcast on that because that was some prophetic things that took place during that time take a look on our youtube channel during the march broadcast the month of march um yeah we're living in a dangerous hour you guys because i got another headline that coincides with this one that's gonna surprise many of you check this out u.s will force israel and palestinian deal it's been reported that the U.S. will lay down its own outline for an accord in January 2014. It is determined to reach solution by mid-2014. What? Excuse me? Can they do that? Can the U.S. just say if you guys don't reach a deal, if you guys are still going to be all like this to one another and being at ends with one another, then we're just going to have to go in and be the peacemaker? Is the Obama administration really saying that? Can they do that? Hey, I'm going to tell you something. If it's written, you know they can. And when I say written, I mean by God himself. There's prophecy unfolding, my friends. There's prophecy unfolding. It says here, the United States intends to try and force a peace agreement on Israel and the Palestinian Authority. The U.S. has informed Israel and the Palestinian Authority that if negotiations between them do not advance, Washington will propose its own solution that will include a U.S. position on every point that is in contention. In effect, according to the report, this will be an attempt to force the sides to agree on a solution formulated by the U.S. It's been reported that the U.S.'s plan is similar to the Bill Clinton outline offered by President Bill Clinton in late 2000, which is based on an Israeli retreat to the 1949 armistice lines and some swaps of territory. This is such a big deal, this broadcast doesn't even allow me to get into detail with this. But see, that's not even an issue. Because you know we've done broadcasts on this. Again, I say take the time to go to our YouTube channel. They have a search button on our YouTube channel. You can get to our YouTube channel if you're watching this on the actual YouTube site. Uh, my name is right under this broadcast in black, Evangelist Nita Fuentes. You click there. It'll take you to our YouTube channel. We have done detailed broadcasts in regards to the 1949 Armistice Line. In regards to why this peace agreement will be totally different from the other so-called peace agreements that tried to take place or that did take place between any other president and Israel, excuse me, and in the Middle East, Israel and their Arab counterparts. 
it will show why this is specific Bible prophecy. Again, we've done detailed broadcasts. I urge you, just please take the time. Take the time to view it, my friends, because this is some stuff here. This is big time. This is so important. Uh, we got to know what time it is. We got to know that the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let him, let, let he who reads understands, is what the Lord says in the Gospels, know what he says. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, it talks about the abomination of desolation. We see a new pope now in the Vatican. See, that's a whole other story. I'm going off. I, I got to say, I got to say on track here. But I've done, again, broadcasts on the Vatican. I've done, I've done broadcasts on the Pope. Take the time to view them. We've done a lot of research, a lot of work on this, you guys. And, 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 and it's not just for us. It's for everybody who has ears, hears, eyes to see and who really desires to know what time it is. Because the Lord is not hiding any of this from us. It's really in our face. I mentioned something earlier. And it probably sounded off, off the cuff. Like, oh, no, Obama didn't say that. But he did. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this headline from the Washington Times that states, Obama brag in a new book. Obama's quoted as stating, I'm really good at killing people with drones. Oh, you are Mr. Obama. <laughs> That's quite a comment to say. Especially seeing is that we reported on a headline a few months ago where the Department of Homeland, not the Department of Homeland Security, the uh, uh, Attorney General Eric Holder stated that now the Obama administration has allowed drones, if need be, to kill American citizens. So that's really like not comforting at all. President Barack Hussein Obama, but that's what he said. Let's move forward. We have a triple six alert. A DIY cyborg implants a computer chip in arm to track his vital signs. Tim Cannon, creator of the Circadia 1.0, had the device implanted in his arm without a doctor or an aesthetic. Such devices could eventually give people control of their own biological destiny. Oh, no way. You know what else it could do? It could damn someone to hell because this is a, 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 just a sign of what is coming, what is here, of the mark of the beast spoken of in the book of Revelation. He causes all, who's he? The Antichrist, the beast. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to take a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. So what? So that no one will be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the name of the image of the name of the beast. The number of that, the number is the number of a man. It's 666, my friends. Many people believe that 666 refers to the false god of Islam, Allah. Others believe that it refers to Sunday worship. While others believe that it's the Bible that's the mark of the beast 666. I think it's clear in Hebrew numbers that the 666, okay, I'm just saying here. It, it will be a technology based mark. Whether it's a chip, a tattoo, it will be in your right hand or in your forehead it will cause people to be damned because those whose names who are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will worship the beast it says it in the book of Revelation and that's why open your eyes people exist that's why this ministry this broadcast exists that's why I spent hundreds of hundreds of hundreds, if not thousands of hours studying the scriptures, studying these headlines, making sure what the word of the Lord is, spending an innumerable amount of time in the presence of Almighty God to make sure we're bringing you the information that God's called us to by the spirit of the living God. He's here with us right now and he's doing it right now. Praise be to God. The reason why is so that you can get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world. Because the time of separation is right now. The time of separation from the wheat 
and the tears is right now. The time of separation between the hot, the warm, and the luke-cold, excuse me, that made no sense, the hot, the cold, and the lukewarm is happening right now. The separation process of the wise and the foolish versions is happening right now. And God desires that no man should perish, but that all should have eternal life. He says, who will tell them? Unless they go out and preach. And so we're preaching. We believe that 666 represents WWW. It's an internet, it's a, it's a computer, uh, it's a, a technology-based, excuse me, technology-based mark. That once it is inside a person, in their right hand or in their forehead, they will be changed. They will have no desire to want to take this mark off or change their mind because it will literally transform them inside. We have so many, we've done so many broadcasts and there's so much more news on this Mark of the Beast type technology that is used for transhumanism. That's used to change a person's DNA if possible. They're doing it with nano chips. I mean, these things are smaller than a grain of rice. They're smaller, they're about the size of a piece of, of, of a grain of sand. And they change things in a person's makeup, in their body. And this is a specific blasphemy against God Almighty, why? Because you and I are made in the image of God. And Satan seeks for those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life to take the mark of the beast when the time comes, when the Antichrist is on full scene and he's come, he's here. My friends, this, the Antichrist is going to be unveiled before we know it. The Antichrist is going to be unveiled before we know it. And by the time, before you know it, it's going to be too late. Because people are going to, when, the, when this happens, when the Antichrist is unveiled, Many people are not going to be ready to, for, for what's to come. And they're going to be walking in a state of fear. They're going to be walking in that fallen emotion, fear, that by the way, the blood of Jesus took care of on the cross over 2,000 years ago. If you have been filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, you are to walk in the spirit and not in the lust of the flesh. For the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, long-suffering, and self-control. If you have been saved and born again, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire... You got to walk in the spirit and not in the lust of the flesh. But a lot of people are lukewarm. Come on. A lot of people aren't saved. And they're going to walk by the dictates of their emotions. They're fallen emotions. And their fallen emotions. It's fear. Anxiety. Restlessness. Hopelessness. Uh, worry. Uh, unsurety. Uh, if they feel good, do it. If they don't feel good, don't do it. And when the time comes, when the Antichrist is on the scene, and he's not going to look anything like the devil. He's going to look good, very handsome. He's going to sound good. He's going to promise good. He's going to promise peace. And so many people are desperate for peace. They take pills for peace. They drink for peace. They have sex out of marriage for peace. They have adulterous affairs out of peace. They hoard out of peace. So many people desperate for peace. They spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars for a peace that the world gives. And it's temporary. The, Jesus said, the world gives peace. A temporary peace. The Lord says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. He says, not as the world gives, do I give unto you. So the world gives a peace, but it's not the same. Jesus' peace is not the same as the world's peace. And he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. He, I know, I'm skipping here. He says, in my father's house there are many mansions. For I go to prepare a place for you, and if it were not so, I would have told you. He's, he's coming for us. But before that day... The Lord says it. The Lord says it. Lord, I'm going all over it, but it's all good. Second Thessalonians says, Let no man, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day, what day? The day of the Lord shall not come until, unless first of falling away come first, and then the son of perdition, the man of sin, will be revealed. A lot of things are going to be happening before the day, before Jesus comes. We gotta, we, gotta, we gotta be ready. People say, I'm ready. I'm ready for the rapture to happen. Lord, take me home. I'm ready. I'm so out of here. I don't want to be here anymore, Jesus. Just take me out of here, Jesus. Just rapture us. Jesus said it will happen. 
at any time. We don't, no one knows the day. No one knows the hour. We're just going to be raptured out of here at any time. No. He said the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night of those who are not watching. But for those who are watching, you're not going to be caught off guard. He said, watch there for a watch, I say. He also makes it very clear that the, the people say the rapture. You want the, the rapture, the day of the Lord, and he's going to come after those days of the tribulation. Then he will come and send his angels out to the four corners of the world and gather his saints, gather his elect. The saints will be persecuted, my friends. The Lord says that there is a last generation that will be on planet earth during the time and the reign of the Antichrist. But this last generation will not be left alone. The Holy Spirit is not taken out of the way, excuse me, not taken out of the earth. What's taken out of the way is the hand of the living God from stopping the Antichrist coming any, in a moment sooner than what God has called him to, what God has predicted, what God has written already. The moment that he, the Lord, moves the Holy Ghost out of the way, not out of the earth, just out of the way. Like the Holy Ghost out of the way, not out of the earth, just out of the way. Like me going out of the way, maybe from this picture behind me, just out of the way. I'm not leaving the room. I'm just moving. Then he's going to be, the Antichrist is going to be fully, full reign a time, times and a half a time, Satan's going to have like full reign on earth. And there will be persecution and never tribulation. Jesus said there will be tribulation that has never been since even the beginning of the world. And unless those days were short, no, no flesh will be saved. He says there will be false Christ, false prophets rising up, showing signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, the very elect. Because these promises are going to look so good. This peace promise is going to look so good. This, all we have to do is just get rid of these so-called Christians, but they're not really true Christians. They don't represent the true God. They're against homosexual marriage. They're against transhumanism. They're against uh, pledging allegiance to this new world order. They're against the new world order. We need to get them out of here. Put them in FEMA camps. Put them away. Why don't we start beheading them? Let's put some fear into people and tell them, why do you got to make us do this? Why can't you just join the new world order? Why do you got to make us kill you and your family? Why do you got to make us do this in front of a live audience television? Because they will be promoting it on TV, my friends. Oh my gosh, there's so much information. And the Lord is just unveiling it. Unveiling it to his saints. To his prophets. And to his saints. All who have ears to hear. You don't even have to hold a prophet. Uh, you don't have to hold an office of a prophet for him to show you. He says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall what? prophesy. Anita, you shouldn't be preaching the gospel. Uh, God said that a woman can't preach. Shut the hell up. Get out of here and I bind you in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus said your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall see visions. Your young men shall dream dreams. And on my hand servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. The word of the Lord is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. For anyone who says a woman shouldn't be preaching. I just got off the subject, but stuff just we can't be here. We can't we don't we can't be playing games here. I'm a Christian, Anita. And God said you're not supposed to be preaching, and I'm a woman, and God said you shouldn't be preaching. You ain't from God. I'll tell you that in your face. I'll tell you that in the note in the letter. I'll tell I'll tell I'll, well, I'll, I'd be honored to tell you in your face. Tell me that. Because you're not telling me that. You're telling the Holy Ghost that. And the Holy Ghost don't keep silent. And he's not very meek or quiet either. He's very loud and he wants to save, rescue those who are in the pit of hell, going on the 100 mile per hour train going straight to hell. And that train's just zooming faster. It's now a thousand miles per hour and it's got a boatload of people on this train and they think they're on a joyride and they're going straight to hell. And God is calling you and me to preach this gospel. Can't be playing games. I got more headlines. I didn't even get to it. But you know what? Let's just get to it. Let's see how far we go here. Come on. Rare solar eclipse in America, Europe, and Africa. Well, we know that the Lord says in Joel chapter 2 and Acts chapter 2 that the sun will be darkened, the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord. A rare solar eclipse? Hey, it's one of the signs of the times. You do know that water has turned as the color as blood in many nations. 
you know we've done broadcasts on that. Go to our YouTube channel. Just type in Red Water. You will be surprised. You will be surprised, my friends. Fastest growing religion in America is a witchcraft. Well, it's no wonder, seeing as that it's bombarding the television screens, bombarding children's books, bombarding the church. Don't get me started. I, I, I'll have to get started, but not right now. Britney Spears uh, says here, the gospel, according to Britney, new musical tells the story of Jesus Christ through Spears' pop songs. You heard that correctly. There is a play being promoted and accepted. Introduce, it will be a depiction of Jesus, the life of Jesus, but using Britney Spears' pop songs. For instance, it's going to, oh my gosh, this is crazy stuff. It says here, the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ will be described in the musical with the help of Britney hits, such as Baby One More Time, Oops, I Did It Again, Stronger, and Crazy. Whitley County teen refuses to run be, run race because of a 666 number. A Whitley County teen in Kentucky refused to run a race because of the number she was given to wear. Cody Thacker says seeing what some connect with the mark of the beast made her sick. Thacker says running is her passion and she was ready to go for gold at regional cross country which was last Saturday, and she said, I've been training since June for this race. And it's kind of like the climax of my season to run regionals and see how well I do. Well, it turns out that the representatives for the ones who are holding the race claims that when she met officials, she told her that she objected to wearing this number for religious reasons, and they told her that because the number was computer generated, there was no way that it could have been changed. That's a sign of the times. It is in our faces. Are you saved? Are you born again? Have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Are you going through your refining process? Have you even started boot camp? Because God is calling soldiers in this final hour. God's calling soldiers, men and women of God, to join the army of God right now. And if, you know what, guess what? You don't, you don't need to be qualified in order to join. Like, you don't have to be strong before he'll enlist you. You don't have to be not afraid of anything before he will enlist you. Jesus has open enlistment for anyone who is full of fear, full of sin, full of uh, oppression, torment, full of addiction. He has it open for anyone who's been practicing a homosexual lifestyle, uh, someone who's just completely confused as to who they are, their identity. He has it open. The Lord is enlisting right now to have you join the army of God. He will, he'll clean you up. If you're addicted, he'll clean you up. But you got to come to him as you are. If you're in adultery, you got to come to him as you are. If you've done horrible things to people or little ones, hey, you got to come to him as you are. And he'll make you a new creature in Christ. He'll make you born again. He'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life so you won't be deceived in this final hour and worship the beast and be damned for all eternity. Because we're talking about the lake of fire there. You don't want to, no, you don't want to mess with that. And you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind to walk the way that God's called you to walk in this final hour. As a bold and fearless man or woman of God, child of God, listen, you don't have to be 18 to enroll. Come on. If you're 15, you're 10, you're 5, hey, I got young babies. And they all know about the Lord. I'm currently pregnant and I'm preaching to my baby. Praise God. You get what I'm saying, though. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you're a four-year-old and you're with your mama, your daddy, your grandma, your grandpa, your aunt, your uncle, and you're listening to this broadcast, baby, the Lord would be honored to have you join his army. And he will anoint you with the Holy Ghost and fire, and you go preaching that word to, you, to your little circle of friends. Because I may not ever be able to reach him. Maybe your beloved family may not be able to reach him. And there's little kids ministering the word of God in schools, in, in, in kindergarten, preschool. I'm not kidding. Out of, out of the mouth of babes, praise is perfected. 
Let the children come on to me, Jesus said, and do not stop them, for such is the kingdom of God. God, it's never too young to receive Jesus, to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, but Anita, that's too much responsibility. No, you don't understand, my, my friend. God does not want or need or is calling you to stop your child from receiving Jesus Christ. He's not stopping your child from getting water baptized, and he's certainly not stopping your child in receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. He's not stopping your baby. Even Jeremiah, a prophet who was called in the Old Testament, God called Jeremiah, young man, young man. And Jeremiah said, wait, you're calling me to go preach to these older men that know way more, have been living a lot longer. And they're going to look at me like, who are you talking? He said, God, I can't go. I'm, I'm just young. I'm, I'm a youngster. I can't go. And God said, don't say that, Jeremiah. I've called you. Go speak the words that I'm telling you. I'll anoint you. And he anointed him. Praise God. If you're full of fear, and I was, God knows. You're walking around in anxiety. Maybe you've experienced just panic attacks, torment, obsessive compulsion disorder, just crazy things running through your head, your mind racing, all sorts of crazy things and images and scenes trying to intimidate you that those things are going to happen. That's a lie from the pit of hell, and God will deliver you and set you free. But you got to surrender your life to Christ so that he could give you a new life, so that he could put you through the boot camp, so that he can start the healing. God's boot camp is powerful and holy, and it's a cleansing boot camp. It's a deliverance boot camp. Praise God. And he does wonders with anyone, no matter how damaged you may be. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, maybe you've been delving into some dark stuff. Maybe you've worshipped Satan. Maybe you've been practicing this Wicca. It says Wiccan's now the fastest growing religion. It's not too late. If you're still breathing, even if you sold your soul to Satan himself, if you are still breathing... God will rescue you right now. you got to call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved and the anointing of the living God will break the yoke. Listen, my friends, i got to wrap this broadcast up. Many of you know what I'm saying and you want to receive. You say, okay, I'm down with this. I don't know what to say, though. What do I say? Where do I start? I'd be honored. My friend, I would be honored to help lead you into a prayer of full surrender before the throne room of God and you can confess to the Lord that you want your name written in, that you want to join his army, that you want to be born again, be covered by the blood of Jesus, have your sins forgiven, be a new creature, a new man or woman in Christ Jesus, and that you're saying yes to the anointing that breaks the yoke, and you want to receive the promise of the Father, which is a baptism of the Holy Ghost, email me, anita at emoaf.org. Again, I'll be honored just to help you. I hope he lead you into that prayer, and God will set you free. He'll do it all. He'll do it all, my friends. I'll have a wonderful day. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. And uh, before I let you go, you got to visit our website. We have just a little bit more of these 1159 magnetic bumper stickers. We're giving them away for any donate them out towards the work of this ministry. Listen, we need your donations to help keep this ministry running strong. It's a vitally important ministry in, this, in these end times. Vitally important. We can't do this ministry by ourselves, and we need your help. If you know that we're the real deal, if you know that you've been blessed by the work of this ministry, if you know that this ministry is needed in such a time as this, and you want to help propel this ministry even further into the four corners of the world, you want to help get into your neighborhoods, we, we're putting up billboards, we're sending out discipleship packages, we're doing so much by the Spirit and grace and the leading of the living God. Donate towards the work of this ministry. It's a huge investment for the kingdom of God. Come on. We offer no gimmicks for your donations, but we definitely offer kingdom results, and we praise God for that. And uh, again, we have a little bit more of these. We'd be honored to send you one. Visit us, www.emof.org. That's www.emof.org. Visit us on our Facebook page as well, where there are more headlines matching Bible prophecy. You may be surprised. And join the conversation. It gets funny, interesting, angering at times. But nevertheless, it's an awesome privilege to uh, have such conversations taking place. So again, visit us on our Facebook page and shout out and say hi. I'd love to say hi back to you, okay? Have a great one. God bless you. Bye-bye. How to walk in these last days. 
In this two-part series, the Holy Spirit teaches us how to walk in this final hour before the soon return of Jesus Christ. With many in the church, including leaders, becoming apostate, with the world shaking like never before, with evil seemingly having the upper hand in the world around us, we must know how we are to continue to run our race regardless of what we see or hear in this present world. Log on today to www.emof.org. Open Your Eyes People is an end time publication broadcast with specific focus on the signs of the times, end of the age, Jesus' soon return. This is Evangelist Anita Fuentes. Open Your Eyes People brings you the latest in breaking news world headlines matching Bible prophecy. God said in Isaiah chapter 46 verses 9 through 10, he declares the end from the beginning. Are we living in the last days? Is all that is happening been prophesied in the Bible? Are we the last generation? These and many more questions are answered through this spirit-led broadcast. With over 180 nations tuning in each week, it's no wonder God is using this broadcast to see hundreds come to salvation each week, rededicate their lives to Christ, and sharpen their walk in the narrow way. Donate today. Go to www.emoaf.org. That is www.emoaf.org.